The Buffalo Bills fall to six and six on the season while taking another few years off my life this week on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. You are now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast, a show on the Buffalo fan base podcast network. My name is Justin and I am your host today. And today we are talking about a, another brutal, devastating loss. Um, obviously falling to the Eagles 37 to 34 in overtime. Um, and I'm going to say right off the top here, this is going to be kind of a weird episode for me because I'm, I try to stay, you know, pretty, pretty measured, pretty in between not ride too high or too low on any given week. And I feel like that's creating like a, a confusion inside myself, I guess, um, because right now I'm somewhere in between. That was the best game that I've seen the Bills play all season. Sucks that we ran into, you know, the team with the best record in the league was in the Super Bowl last year. You know, we went toe to toe with them, but the Bills looked great. I'm somewhere between that and McDermott needs to be fired. And that's a roller coaster for me right now. Um, overall, I think this kind of was a game of a tale of two halves for for the defense. Um, absolutely had the clamps on. Um uh, Jalen Hurts was 4 of 11 for 33 yards going into the half. They had 99 yards of total offense. Um, you know, they obviously got the one touchdown, but, you know, there was punts. There was turnovers. You know, the defense was playing out of their minds. Uh, they were getting pressure left and right. And then the second half, you know, the Eagles made adjustments and the Bills just didn't have the counter. And, you know... I think it's very easy in in the hindsight to, you know, yes, James Cook had a walk in touchdown. Um, the block field goals, you know, the block field goal, you know, that kick needs to be higher. Bass has another missed field goal. Um, just a guy that's been so consistent and just something's off this year. Um, I don't I don't feel good when he's coming onto the field anymore. But all these things kind of. We can talk about it. But to me, it's like adding three points on at the end of the game from Bass making a field goal doesn't mean that if he makes that field goal, we win, right? The football is a big game of chess. And, you know, if we get that three extra points, then they're playing situations differently, blah, blah, blah. Um, especially with that James Cook touchdown, like, yeah, it'd be wonderful to have started the game with that, right? Um, but at the same time, you know, you still had whatever 45 minutes to play where things can change and be different um so what i have to look at in this situation is you know game on the line coming down the stretch the bills had a chance to win this game and there was two different times that the offense scored the points to to you know take the lead right towards the end of the game um, and we needed that one more stop from the defense. And, you know, for a lot of the years, a lot of the year, I've kind of been giving the defense that that built in answer of, you know, the offense had you on the field all day. And when you were getting the stops, you were giving the ball back. When we needed the one more, you were gassed because you were on the field for 40 of 60 minutes. Um, and I still I still stand by that to an extent. Um but this is this is a game where you come down the stretch here and you know Josh Allen the offense take the lead and I'm texting my buddy who's an Eagles fan you know he's all mad that they just lost the game and I was like dude the Buffalo Bills are the best team in the league at letting the opponent march down the field and get into field goal range like nothing and and we saw it again and this is kind of where I get to the McDermott's got to go. Um, for for a coach that's always 
preaching the growth mindset and learning from mistakes and coming out the other side better. Look, he's I think he's a great leader. Um, I think he's a great football mind. But when he's talking about growth mindset all the time and he continues to lose in the exact same ways, um, just countless brutal losses uh, going to this, you know, soft defense, make sure they're, they're not hitting the long ball on you, you know, playing completely different defense than you've played all game. I understand situationally football is different, whatever. I understand that, you know, holding them to a 59 yard field goal is, is a pretty good result, right? Um, but for, for how easily they got to that 59 yard field goal, you know, you get to 59 yards, uh, after they take a penalty, um, but what doesn't sit right with me here at all is the icing the kicker timeout. I listen, that this is something we, that we still see so much in the NFL. That shit hasn't worked in years. Um, that's something that was like super talked about like 10, 15 years ago. I'm like, oh, they're going to ice the kicker and, you know, really make them think about it. Everybody's been doing it for 10, 15 years. The kickers know it's coming. Like, the, they're probably more thrown off if you don't take that time out. That's not just a McDermott thing. That's a league thing. I hate it. I would never do it. But furthermore, with the Bills, you have Josh Allen as your quarterback. You have a general generational talent. You have whatever you want to stack up the numbers on objectively and not just as a Bills fan. You have a top five quarterback in the league. Uh, you, see, you saw this happen with... Mahomes and Kelsey and Hill with 13 seconds. You saw them be able to move down the field and get into that field goal range. You waste a timeout on icing the kicker, and now you have 20 seconds and one timeout with Josh Allen. You kneel it out to go to overtime. That's that's playing not to lose football, and that that's it's been my biggest complaint about Sean McDermott and his whole tenure is he plays this not to lose game of football at the end instead of instead of playing to win um I mean at that point if whatever they get the 59 yard field goal you have to answer back with your own and and that's it you have time on the clock you got two timeouts you have an offense that's been firing on all cylinders all day could there be a pick six that ends the game? Sure. Um, I don't know about you guys. I would I would love for a game to end in a pick six because we were going for it instead of this conservative, just watch them methodically do whatever they want to go down and know it's going to happen. Um, and when that game, you know, heads into overtime, it, I... If we didn't score a touchdown on that first drive, I, I had no faith that we were going to win that game. Um, the defense just wasn't able to adjust after the half. And I, I think this is one of the things that, you know, moves me towards McDermott's got to go is this is this has never changed, right? Um, he's a defensive coach. He's, you know, game on the line situationally. He wants to take control of the situation. Anybody that's making it to the head coaching level in the in the NFL is they have egos. <laughs> They're gonna want that game to come down on their shoulders. Time and time again, it hasn't worked. Um, and now there's there's no defensive coordinator to fire. Um, there's no changing of offensive coordinator because you made the right switch. Uh, the offenses looked night and day different. I think. You diagnosed that. I think you were correct. Dorsey had to go. It, it, the offense just wasn't working. And now you have the offense firing on all cylinders for this game. I mean, this is probably the top two performances from Allen. And both of them end up as losses in overtime. Like, it's it's just unacceptable. It's crazy. I mean, Josh Allen, 339 yards passing. Another 81 on the ground. He accounts for four touchdowns, two passing, two rushing. I mean, that's... 
34 points in, in that game from your quarterback, that should that should do it. <laughs> that should do it like 99% of the time. And 99% of the time, it doesn't do it for us. And like I said, there there's there's nowhere there's nowhere else to shift this blame at this point. Um now do I have my hesitations about it? Yeah. Um one thing in particular is and it's hard for me to you know kind of hitch my wagons to this type of thing because it's been two games but it in the two games that we've seen joe brady um working with josh allen in the offense it, it looks like they found something special um i i was excited for brady to be added to this staff because i think he you know had a pretty pretty bad deal in carolina i mean we had matt rule he had Sam Darnold, you know, it, I don't think he got a fair shake there. And I, I was excited that he got add, added to this staff. Um, that being said, you know, I'm getting to the point where I feel really good about him, you know, staying on as the full-time offensive coordinator um, going into next year. Um, the leaps I'm seeing is fire McDermott and make Joe Brady the head coach, which... <laughs> just sounds absolutely wild to me you know after the guys been oc for you for two weeks and had success um but then i think about like how wild is it because this is this is the type of thing where okay if you're firing sean mcdermott in the offseason um bringing in a new head coach head coaches want all their own guys in the building they, you don't see many holdovers when when teams you know, flip head coaches. Um, you're going to have a ton of personnel sh shuffling around. Um, they're going to want their players. They're going to want to clear out contracts, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, yes, me, uh, yes, Bean has a hand in that too. It's, it's a, a, a collaboration. Um, but when you, when you make that sweeping change at head coach, you know, the, it's, it's not always just this simple one for one swap of, okay, everything is exactly the same. And now we have a coach that, you know, is going to finish games off better for us. And that's it. Super Bowl. Um, it's got to be a whole new season that starts. It's got to be a whole new, you know, I, there's a chance to whole new everything. Um, I think it was Greg Thompson was talking about over on Cover One um, about the need for the the next head coach to be. Um, an offensive minded head coach. And I think he made a great point on this of all these teams, there's head coaching jobs coming available every year. Um, when, when these OCs are, are showing out, it doesn't take long for them to get jobs. People are trying to find them, you know, early on in their career. So year or two of success and they're, they're getting head coaching offers. Um, so even if we, even if we did replace McDermott, even if, Brady does stay on the staff and continue having this success. Um, if he's having that level of success, it's not going to be, you know, getting a head coach fired and he's going to get job out offers elsewhere. Um, this is like the jumping six steps ahead of things that we have to consider when we're sitting at week 12 and a team that should be in Super Bowl conversation is at six and six. Um, all that said, I, I think it's a very slim chance that that McDermott would get fired this season. Um, I think Pagula has had the most success since owning the Bills and the Sabres under McDermott. Um, he's the one that does the hiring and firing, and he extended McDermott this offseason. Um, I, I think that I, I don't think a coaching change would be made in season. Even if we're mathematically eliminated, I just I just don't see it. Um, and when you get to those those tough offseason conversations where you're making the hard decisions, I, I think you can cite, you know, the injuries. You can cite, mm, we had the wrong guy in place at OC, and look how good we did after that. Let's get that for a full season. Um, but for me, it, it's just this just series of just absolutely disastrous losses and this is going back to all the way back to the houston playoff game you know we have a 16 point lead at half 
uh, 13 seconds. Uh, Jets game this year, Patriots game this year, Minnesota game. It, it just goes on and on and on. And so many of these games are... The offense leaves the field with going go ahead points, small amount of time on the clock, and the defense can't can't shut it down. Um, McDermott's always talking about complimentary football. I know the offense wasn't pulling their weight most of the beginning of the season. They're pulling their weight in that game, and special teams and defense let them down this game. Um, so. Like I said, I, I've, I've been a big supporter of McDermott. Um, I, I've got into debates with people about, you know, them being too alarmist and, and you know, ready to fire him. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much there at this point. Um, my trepidation on it is, is like I talked about, um, if we see Brady keep having the offense look like this, like it looks now, for the remainder of the season and you're going to risk not being able to retain him on your staff. Um, you know, what's, what's the next head coach look like? Um, there's things that give me pause about it. Um, cause it can always be worse. Right. But I've thought for a long time that McDermott has his flaws, but he was still a good enough coach to, to win you a Super Bowl with a lot of other things, you know, working out well, you know, uh, top notch OC offense humming. I think I do, I do still think that he's good enough to get it done. I think that the circumstances have to be, you know, too perfect for the NFL. And, and that's, that's where he's losing me. Um, like I said, I think he's a great leader. Um, I think he has done wonderful things to, you know, take this team from a laughing stock of the league to a perennial playoff contender. And it, it feels really weird sitting here for, you know, hands down the best coach that I've seen in my lifetime. I'm 33 years old and I think of, you know, some of the guys that we shuffled through of, you know, Dick Duran, Doug Marone, Chan Gailey, all of these, all these names. And the one thing that all, all of those coaches didn't have, you know, that might've led them to the same type of success is they didn't have a Josh Allen. Um, and I, I think Josh Allen is such a good player that he's going to make a lot of coaches look good. He's going to make a lot of coaches get jobs. Um, you know, Brian Dable over with the Giants. The Giants have kind of a train wreck of a roster. They're uh, dealing with a ton of injuries as well. Um, but it's not like Dayball had this transcendent generational offensive plan that didn't matter who his quarterback was. He he had a good offensive system that looked better because Josh Allen was there. Uh, McDermott has a great record as the Bills head coach. He's had Allen the whole time, pretty much. Um, so, you know, could it be worse? Yes. Um, but also, you know, for, for any coaches out there that would be you know, looking to be promoted to the offensive or the head coach position. This job with this roster in that quarterback is going to be the most sought after position in the league. If it came free, um, there's no question about that to me. Um, you kind of got your choice of who you would want if you go that route. Um, so, so I think it's, I think it's something that really needs to be considered. And it's something that I don't think is going to be considered unless the Bills like pretty much, you know, lose out. Uh, speaking of losing out, we're going to talk about what lies ahead for the rest of the season here um, right after the break. So stick around. Hey, this is Dick DeGroat, Bills dad. Now back to the show.
Bills Mafia, welcome back in and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. If you've made it this far, I do please ask that you like, share, subscribe if you're enjoying this at all. Uh, just help us get the word out to everybody. It does, you know, help us keep these shows going. Um, want to get back and talk about what kind of lies ahead for the Bills for the remainder of this season. And uh, I understand this isn't, you know, very similar structure to to how the show usually goes but you know breaking down the nuts and the bolts of how that game went like we all we all watched it right um we all know that it was two heavyweights going toe to toe and philly came out on top we all saw how it happened um breaking down stats from what happened that game doesn't doesn't feel like the need right now um, I think it's kind of just a, a big picture conversation of the offense is back on track in where you were expecting them to be. Um, obviously, making the move to move on from Dorsey was the right move. You can debate if it should have been done a couple weeks before. You can debate if you know we didn't lose that game to Denver if he's still employed. Probably was. Um, but this is where we are. I mean, this offense is humming right now, and it's it's defense and it's coaching decisions down the stretch that that continue to cost this team. Um, so all that being said, I, I kind of started out the beginning of this episode with the dichotomy of where I am right now, right? Of watching this team go toe to toe with you know the best record in the league team that was in the Super Bowl damn near won the Super Bowl last year uh you know the feeling that I have of like I saw the exact team that I expected the Bills to be this year and the context matters so much here because that I like I don't I don't take much issue with that loss last night other than you know how it ended um but even at that, if you take away some of the other things that happened in this season, I don't really have a problem dramatically losing to one of three teams from the NFC that'll be in the Super Bowl this year, right? What I have an issue with is some of the just terrible losses we've taken along the way. And, you know, granted, Denver is now a, they're a team that's been really resilient they're winning football games that team is not a better football team than you and you lost it on a blunder a coaching blunder naturally um patriots you know they they can't decide if mac jones or bailey zappy should finish a game and we made mac jones look like an mvp caliber quarterback for the last two minutes to to let them win the game. Um, the Jets are, yeah, the Jets lost um, to start out the season. Um, absolutely brutal game by Allen and the offense. Still in a position to win that game and, and got thrown away. Um, and that's a game that, you know, coming in was like this marquee matchup. Aaron Rodgers versus Josh Allen. Aaron Rodgers played four plays. Um, so... But this this loss isolated by itself doesn't really bother me. I I enjoyed that game yesterday, other than the context of what it means for the season right now. Um, realistically, do I still think the Bills have a shot at the playoffs? Um, if I was putting my money on it, not I wouldn't say yes. I think this is a team that misses the playoffs with Josh Allen as quarterback. Um, and that's mostly just because we, we've already had our we've already had the cushy part of the schedule. Um, you know, you're getting a, a first place schedule from from finishing first in the division last year. You're getting that first place schedule and you got a gauntlet of games coming up and you know, some of these games, when you looked at the schedule at the beginning of the season, you're like, okay, you know, maybe go two and two, one and three, whatever, through this tough stretch of 
Philly, Dallas, Kansas City. That that's a tough stretch right there. That's that's where you kind of figured you might you might take a couple losses there. Um and whatever, you you know, maybe you're sitting at you know, 3 4 5 losses on the season. The team that we have assembled here and the aspirations of this team to be sitting at 6 and 6 at this point is why I I don't feel good about them making the playoffs. Um realistically on the other hand could it happen sure um the way the team played last night um the way the way that offense got rolling it just takes a little bit a couple tweaks you're gonna have close games like this and that's where that's where i'm really hesitant um maybe you can take one more loss this season it damn well better be an nfc team I don't know if 10 and 7 gets you to the playoffs at this point. I think there's a chance. Um, but when you're looking at the remaining schedule, coming out of the break against the Chiefs, um, not quite the team that we've seen from from the Chiefs in years past of just absolute dominance. They're still winning a ton of football games. They're still a very good football team. Um, the Cowboys, the Cowboys look crazy. Um uh, they're going crazy on offense. They're going crazy on defense. Maybe that's the one more loss you can take this season. Maybe. Um, I think that's a game that you could you could swing the tide with some turnovers. Dak Prescott is is a similar breed to Josh Allen of he'll he'll make a lot of electric plays and he'll he'll leave some out there to to be in danger. Um the, the Chargers kind of you know, perennial underachievers, kind of very similar to the Buffalo Bills. Um, they're having a rough season. You got the Patriots again. I, I sure hope that, you know, I, I sure hope that you get that one right this time. There, there's no way that that should have been a loss. That's one of the most embarrassing losses that I can remember. Um, and then you're finishing up the season against Miami and... You know, if you take care of if you take care of business, that Miami game to close out the season could be the difference of whether or not you make the playoffs. And it makes me think back to a couple of years ago when, you know, the Bills were playing their backups and Miami needed to win to get a playoff spot. Buffalo was already kind of buttoned up with seeding and everything. And we came out and kicked them in the teeth with our backups and we might have the same situation this year where we need to win that game to to make the playoffs and the dolphins have nothing to play for and uh, outside of you know some of the backups trying to make a name for themselves um, find themselves on a different roster with a starting opportunity work their way up the depth chart on that team for the next season um Do I think they went out? I I think this is the team with the potential to. Um, I think you have the quarterback. I think you have the offense rolling. And th- this is kind of what I've been looking for the whole year of, yeah, we took, we took brutal losses on defense. Absolutely terrible losses. Um, especially for how early in the season they happened. And, you know, not being four, five, six week injuries, like all these pretty much being season ending injuries. They're brutal. Um, this is a team that you have that quarterback and you should be able to overcome pretty much anything that happens on defense. Um, so do I think there's potential to, you know, finish five and oh, four and one. I think there's very real potential. Um, I'm not getting my hopes up. Just, based on who the Bills have shown us that they are this year. And I think we've seen a different team over the last two games. I think we've seen the same the same coaching when the game's on the line. So, you know, if this was kind of a cupcake part of the schedule and I could come in hoping we were about to boat race some teams to finish out the season, I feel very differently about it. Um, you're playing a against some teams with some really good defenses 
um, some really good offenses and there's going to be close games down the stretch and historically McDermott has shown us for all his talk about the growth mindset he's not changing how he finishes out a close game um there's so many examples of it now it's the prevent defense and you know trying to milk out the clock and put them in a bad situation that they need to make a play to win the game and the other team is just continues making that play um i think i think there needs to be significantly more aggression in in those circumstances for this team to have any chance to do anything um you you have Josh Allen as a quarterback um don't don't drop in to prevent defense bring some heat um get after the quarterback if you if you give up a you know 60 yard touchdown whatever you probably still got like a minute and a half left in that situation with a couple timeouts and you have a guy on the sideline that's won those kinds of games for you tons of times. We've seen crazy amounts of Josh Allen. Like he thrives in that game winning drive back against the wall situation. Leaving, leaving no chance for him to be the one to finish the game and just banking on that injury riddled defense, playing prevent defense to finish out the game. It, it can't happen anymore. And We've been saying this for, what, six years now with McDermott, and it has not changed. His philosophy on how he's going to end close games has not changed. His management of clock and timeout has not changed. And for all those reasons, I don't think the Bills make the playoffs this year, and I sure hope I'm wrong. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Um, We're headed into the bye week. um, So we'll be back around the same time next week. Kind of collect our thoughts a little bit. Look at, you know, what's coming up. Look at what happens kind of around the league and how it affects the Bills playoff chances. Um, So look out for that episode. Again, I thank you for joining me on this week's episode. Um, Drop a comment, like, share, subscribe. Tell me if you think I'm completely off base. Let me know what your plan would be. Um, drop it all. Make sure you're checking out the website, wanderingbuff.com. Um, great work from Jake over there. Uh, I'm going to have a couple new articles up this week, so make sure you're checking that out. Uh, appreciate you joining us this week, and go Bills. Go Bills.